I was going to use the crane for that, but I didn't need it because I'm a horse of a man. So my plan here is to cut these one straight edge on each one make them both 315 15 mils wide because then they will fit into my thicknesser leaving one live edge on each and then the two together will make up 630 mils and the reason I'm tackling these right now is because Rosie's kind of keen to have these for our new New Year's Eve party to have a table in our sunroom and I'm not doing a perfectly flat I'm going to put it through the thickness of both sides or maybe just one side in fact and by using these two myself through my own thicknesser I've still got two big ones on the bottom there that if I do take if I do decide to go to Sydney I can make a better table later with two wider boards but today I'm going with these two But an extension for my track is now 2.8 meters long. So I can do I can do this cut in one go, or at least without moving the rail. I might have to do bits at a time if the saw can't cope with the depth, but we'll see. I put stickers under the slab so I can't touch the metal and I've also clamped the track at both ends so it can't move now. So let's get cutting. shop's a mess. That worked pretty good. The second slab is thicker than the first and actually thicker than the blade or thicker than the blade's plunge capacity by only about one millimeter. But uh, that's okay. By the time I, uh, well it doesn't matter. Yeah. By the time I shave it all down, get the two planks pretty close together in thickness, then the blade will be able to cope with them both. And I was thinking they don't actually need to be the same thickness as long as when I put the uh, pin, the pins or whatever you call them down the middle, as long as I do that with the face down then the face will be even doesn't matter about the bottom maybe anyway i'll let the dust settle in there for now and i'll come back tomorrow to start running them through the thicknesser i was actually going to do another job in there tonight but the dust is so bad i can't be bothered 
So dust collection has got to be a priority. Okay, I thought with the little bevel on one side um, it would slide onto the table no problem and in theory that is sound but there are things on the top half of the machine that also get stuck when it's too wide so I'm gonna to have to cut it a little bit narrower. Hmm. I mean that doesn't matter much, but just means I gotta do another long cut on it. After I get it unstuck. No, that's okay. I can just wind it back up again. I'll get it out alright. But look how nice it is. That was just the first shave. That's going to be beautiful. If I'm going to do that successfully, I think I need to buy myself two more rollers. One on the outfeed, one on the infeed. Just to keep the balance uh, right, because um, if I feed it in up or down, that's not good on the machine. And if I let it drop as it comes out, that's not good on the machine. So I've got to have it going in straight which I can control a lot better but I have to have an extra roller to keep it level coming out I'll call it quits for now because I need to go to the tip anyway and Bunnings is on the way so I don't think those rollers are expensive it's a long time since I bought that one but they're not expensive but I need two. I definitely need two more then.
Okay, I've skinned it. I've got all the dirt off it. Looks lovely. Uh, it isn't flat because it's got a warp in it. Uh, and a thicknesser doesn't take warps out of things. So what I'm going to do is just sand it a bit and make the table as is for now. So that's beautiful. Now I have to do the second one. It's hard work. I hope you appreciate it. I think the blades are getting dull. So, they're double sided so I'll flip them over. After a rest. Drive belt broke. That could be tricky to replace. Not only broken, but it's actually melted, which is really weird. Oh, pretty hot. <laughs> uh, that was going to be my last pass. And then when that broke, the blades dug in. But only that far from the end, so I might just leave it now and sand it. Cut that end off, because the table's too long anyway. Uh, talking about sanding. I went through the grits on this one. I started at 40 on a big belt sander. Then I did 80 on a rotating, oscillating rotating thing. Then I did 120, then 180 and 240. And then to finish it off I did 600 by hand and it feels like glass when you get the dust off it it's beautiful it feels like glass gorgeous so that took a couple of hours to do that I shall have to do the same with this one now I need the big belt sander to get little, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it there. Um, I've got a cheap thicknesser, so the outfeed roller or whatever prevents that on a good machine, doesn't prevent it on mine. And that's probably something to do with what happened down here as well. That'll be a couple of hours work. 
a couple of boring hours work that you don't need to follow along with because I'm nice. Uh, yesterday I got a bit carried away with the excitement and the tiredness at the end of the day uh, and I didn't film some stuff so I've squared off the ends both ends and here's the thing when I cut these individually with my track saw they weren't perfectly straight because the track saw tracks are joined together and may not have been perfectly square in the joints. So the two halves weren't married up together perfectly. Well, when it was touching in the middle, it had about a two mil gap down on the end here. So I saw a thing on YouTube that can fix a problem like that. And that's where you get the track saw line it back up down the middle of the two boards and you cut both pieces at the same time with the same blade and therefore the two sides are matching sides because you have cut a little shimmy off one piece and a little shimmy off the other piece but you're cutting both pieces with the same blade at the same time and it worked because now it's uh, perfectly butted up together no gaps at all now I don't have a domino joiner I only have a biscuit joiner and I don't think biscuit joiner is good enough for two monster slabs like this plus I don't want to glue them together just yet in fact I probably don't want to glue them together at all for various reasons so what I'm going to do is drill through probably come in about 600 from each end and drill straight through both of them and put a threaded rod through the center there and bolt them together what I'm going to do first though is put a little pocket out here to carry the knot and by the way it's Christmas Eve today I hadn't planned on doing anything today but I came out to see what mess the shed was in I did a little bit of cleaning up and now I'm in the mood for drilling holes so ho 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 Merry Christmas now I think I'm about level at that a reasonable depth I think I'm sitting on the ground so I can judge level better I think I'll be here till next Christmas I'll give it one more push but I might have to go buy a new one. Nah, no, I'm kidding myself with that. Okay. I'll buy a new drill, a new long drill. And I'll probably get the right one to match whatever threaded rod I'm going to use. But that's the gist of it. So, uh, so Merry Christmas. I might actually edit this video as of tonight, tomorrow. Rosie's working tomorrow on Christmas Day, so I've got the day to myself. And she already told me I'm not allowed to make noise in the neighborhood on Christmas Day, so I might stay indoors and make a video and make it up to this point in this table. 
and then I can have a par two for the rest of the table. So anyway, Merry Christmas to you and yours and everyone you know. I hope you have a great holiday, uh, a great festive season and a fantastic 2024. And thanks for watching my videos, this one and previous if you have. If you haven't, please subscribe and click the like button and all that good YouTube stuff so I can make more of these things because I'm having fun doing it. Right, enough rabbiting. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody.